our Drift Drift Week, guys. First things first. In about one hour, we're going to get together and do it. First, we're going to start driving before an hour, so don't worry about that. Uh, we are going to put our fastest car against uh, a cart. So we're going to do a challenge and see what the actual time difference on this track is between a cart and a car. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is so bad. <laughs> this is why I don't run FD like working on cars anymore. I'm a terrible oh. mechanic. Now I have to go buy someone a whole $20 tube of JB Weld. Dude, what do I, what like I, toothpaste. What do I even do with this? <laughs> Just exploded. How do I look? I think you look good. I'm scruffy from being on the road for two weeks. What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We are out here with my buddy, Chelsea Denofa. We're actually at Adams Motorsport Park. This is a long ways from where you are. Yeah, it's about a thousand miles from where I'm at in uh, Washington State. So what are you doing out here? So we're on drift week, which is uh, a thing we've been talking, Aaron and I have been talking about for about 10 years and a couple of the other guys got together and we wanted to do a trip where we drove the race car or street cars and drove events every other day. So we started in Texas, then went to New Mexico, then uh, we were in Arizona for two different days. Now we're here in California. We have another event in Grange and then uh, we're even gonna head over to Hoonigan for a little while and shred over there. Have you heard of Drag Week? Yes. All right. Clearly that's where Drift Week came exactly. from. <laughs> I've been saying this in every one of these videos. So I've followed Hot Rod Drag Week for many years and it totally completely reminds me of that. It's exactly that. Hot Rod Drag Week, I always say, is endurance drag racing, right? So they make one pass, it's five different days, five tracks, and they drive over a thousand miles on some of these cars that are basically pro mod 4,000 horsepower oh, cars, yeah. right? This is the drift version of it. Yeah, but instead so. of d making one pass, you're drifting all day. You're all going day. through tires. That's the craziest thing. So you're actually driving this. How many miles have you put on this thing? So I did cheat and trailer the car to Albuquerque from Texas because it was icy and my girlfriend didn't want to drive the rig or fiance now, I guess. But she didn't want to drive the rig through the ice. So we trailered it there. And then since then, it's driven every event since uh, that point, except uh, to here today. So basically, uh, one of the co Corvettes that was driving, his motor blew up. So he's been driving this car while we were trailering his car out to here, and now he's finally putting a motor in it. So it's been driven probably about 1,300 of the miles so far, and we'll probably do another four or 500 before the end of the trip. But that's kind of the impressive thing, you know, like you're doing what like a I don't even, I can't even imagine how many laps you're doing in this thing because 26 tires worth so far that is <laughs> with I, 300 horsepower right. so they, they last like 30 laps each you know that's so perfect loud. yeah so you're doing like 100 laps a day uh yeah I mean I've probably done 50 here and we're only halfway through so yeah for sure that is so cool so this really is like the dream event for drifters like could you imagine because I think don't quote me on this but I think um, Hot Rod Drag Week started with around 10 cars for yep. the first year and they've been going for over 10 years now, right? So you guys started with 13 cars. Uh, how many is left? 10? Well, if the Corvette is running by the end, it would still be 12. We'd only lost one car so far. That's pretty cool. So potentially this could be like a mass migration drift event. Yeah, or even just a style of drifting, right? right. Cause you got to have the car that can make it all those miles and drift and you have to be dumb enough to try to do it. 
because we're all driving on all these flat spotted tires and all that for like 500 plus miles. Like this car's been through like 11 tie rods already, mostly from the street miles with wobbling wheels and stuff. So just lots of little things you don't even think of. Like I've been overnighting tie rods to like every location that we go to. <laughs> That's wild. so cool. And then, you know, our car, a couple gas stations we stopped at only had 86 octane. And like, this is like 13 and a half to one compression. So we're like calling our tuners at midnight to have them like log in over like phone Wi-Fi to pull timing out. And like, it's been a interesting thing that like, you kind of realize all these things that you never realized before because of how the, how different it is. You know? That's actually kind of a really fun thing. I've been talking to a lot of the other guys and a lot of the other builds. You have the wild, crazy, like look at fielding shredders car, right? Yeah. There's no trunk it's it's basically i mean it is a drift car i mean right? yeah that's a pro am car yeah, and maybe pro two car right and it's been driving the whole way he was saying that he gets whatever 15 miles per gallon whatever he's but, ran out of gas more than everyone else on this trip i don't know if he told you that but yesterday they were he ran out of gas like 20 miles from the nearest gas station and luke with his g35 pushed him for 20 miles at 60 on the highway these are the <laughs> stories these are the stories that i love and that's great. the thing is like when i was following hot rod drag week sometimes we would be go transiting from one track to the other maybe 1 2 a.m you would see these cars broken down on the side of the road changing whatever head gaskets or whatever a lot of those things they actually build the cars just for that event to the point where they run two sets of injectors two different gas tanks uh, all of that crazy stuff do you think that this could be a thing where people are building drift cars just for this kind of event. Yeah, I hope it doesn't get as crazy as that because these types of cars and the types of tracks we're going to are matched very, very well. You really don't need like a thousand horsepower crazy car, but yeah, I mean, there's cars here that have Lexan windows and you know, all sorts of crazy stuff. And we've all had to learn how to drive our cars with street alignments and stuff, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, I think that it could become a thing. You know, like I built this car so that I could drive it on the street back and forth to work at the School of Drift and also go to events and drive and have fun. And we've done that and we've kind of made it work. And then this was like, cool, we built a car that actually fits into something. Like it was really good at everything else, but not great at anything. And that's what this thing has been really good at. So let's go over this car real quick. Yeah, man. What do you call this thing? Uh, it's a 318 Ti, uh -huh. um, but it's got an S54 in it. I just call it the Ti because no one else really has them because they're kind of ugly. It has an S54 out of an E46 M3. It makes about 315, 320 wheel horsepower, res to 8,600. And what's funny about this, and the reason I built it is, and you're gonna find this wild, but this motor is very similar to our FD car motor. Even though it's not anything of the same, but it drives the same type of emotion, right? So it's a little peaky, revs really high, but has plenty of mid-range grunt to kind of do everything. So it's very similar how you drive it with the pedal in this car as our FD car, which makes a thousand horsepower. Get nasty. Here we go. Say howdy, get rowdy. So this came out of the M3 here in the US. In the US, yep. And in Europe, same thing. Um, and we've just got a couple upgrades, uh, active auto work headers, uh, Castro performance intake box. And this is mostly for the sound. It does pick up about 10 horsepower up top, but it just trying to balance that sound of having like an aggressive sounding car without having a super loud exhaust. It has five mufflers on it too, which is another drift week thing. I don't like loud cars, so we have five mufflers. Like the whole exhaust system is mufflers. <laughs> Amazing. This is pretty crazy. So this is pretty much not to like say it, but I mean, I mean, not, not in a derogatory way, but this is the cheapest BMW in the US, right? Oh yeah, it's the Honda Civic of BMWs for sure. <laughs> not to hate on Civics either. Yeah, yeah. I love Civics, but right. this is that. It was, it was meant to be the slightly more expensive four cylinder, you know, simple car. They used, the suspension is from an E30 in the back, which is obviously much older than this car. And it's just, you know, they call it a compact overseas, which it's a compact car, which is exactly what the Civic was. It's kind of fun to me because I look at it and it looks like a regular three series just got cut off. Yeah, right? oh yeah, it's like a coupe but it has like proprietary doors because coupes don't have like a pillar. It's got a bunch of weird things, which sucks because when you crash, you have to find TI parts. <laughs> Magnum TI, yeah. I love that. And it's still got full interior and everything inside. It's got bucket seats and Harman Kardon, Bluetooth radio. I mean, it, it has a pretty, pretty legit cage too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's tucked up tight so that you don't hit it when you're on the street. 
that's a big thing. Like, like having a caged car that you drive on the street, you got to make sure you have really good head clearance. You know, you don't want to hit your head on it. It's actually really streetable, it seems like. Yeah, I have the door uh, panel off so that I can put the window up and down because someone decided to roll the window up with a GoPro sticky on it and shattered the window regulator. <laughs> so, so we have to prop it up and down because it's been really cold for the first half of the trip. It was like 20 degrees when we were driving. Yeah, so m many of these don't actually have heater oh, or have AC. Heat and everything. Oh, okay. I don't have AC, but I've got the sunroof, so it helps. So what else did you do to this thing to make it a drift car? Yeah, so it's got SLR steering kit. It's like about 65 degrees of steering angle, and it's like all chromoly, like really stiff and uh, takes an abuse. And the rear suspension is terrible in these cars. So we've kind of put some pretty stiff springs in the back so the suspension doesn't do a lot of work, and we just lower the nittos down to like 18, 20 pounds of tire pressure to make that grip, and it's super linear and easy to drive. Uh, it's got BC coilovers all the way around that are set up for more of a street car, so it's nice to drive. Other than that, it's fairly simple. It's got a E36 gearbox in it, uh, E30 rear subframe and diff, so it's a little bit more beefed up. I'm yeah. actually surprised more people don't build these for drifting. I would say people don't need to build TIs because they have a lot of little things you have to do to them to make them work because they come with a tiny four cylinder that's useless. But the E36s in general, I feel like, yeah, it's kind of slept on with some people. The 3 Series in general is basically like the European S13. Oh, yeah. That's pretty much what you'll see when you go to any amateur drift. It's starting to be like that in the US too. I'm pretty pumped on it. So I feel like I had a small part of that. This is something else though. It's it's so cool. I love it. It's like your your uh what you're saying guilty pleasure kind of thing. Oh yeah, so it's like everybody has that car that you know, they like or want, but it's like, oh yeah, but like it's not cool to everybody else. So like they don't own it. That's why I bought this and built it cuz I'm like it is ugly, but it's so ugly that it's kind of cool in ways. And it's small. It takes up no space. It's like 2 feet shorter than a regular car, and it's just nice to drive around. Simple, and they're cheap. Like this, this car was basically free and then I just swapped the motor and stuff into it, so. Well, you have a lot of miles left to drive in this yeah. thing. I guess enjoy it. Hopefully you survive it. It's fun. There, there should be shirts, right? I survived Drift Week. That's true, yeah. I mean, it is. Almost everyone's gonna survive it so far, so we'll see. Awesome. All right, guys. That's a wrap.